Okay, let's walk through creating a watershed. Delineate a watershed using the tools in ArcGIS Pro. I've already calculated my flow direction, flow accumulation. Um, what we really need is a pour point. That's the thing that's going to define the upstream area. Um, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but I've classified my flow accumulation um, into two classes, basically, so I can see um, the area where the water, quote unquote, water would be accumulating. The flow is accumulating. This is the, the downstream end of our watershed. Um, and because I'd like to try to delineate this entire canyon, I'm going to look for a pore point that's toward the bottom here. Um, you might be able to see that my classification is starting to branch off. So if I wanted to delineate a smaller subwatershed within Big Cottonwood Canyon, I could pick a pore point along this line and that would delineate this smaller subwatershed here. Um, so you want to make sure that you get it on the flow accumulation line, your pore point. Um, if, you, if you're off by one cell, you're going to end up delineating a much smaller area uh, that drains to that cell instead of the entire watershed. Okay, so to do this, you need to create a point file. Um, and I think the easiest way to do this is just to set up, you know, folder connection to your output location. So this is a folder connection. I'm just going to choose that folder. And then within here, I can um, make a new shapefile. I want it to be a point file. You could also just run the create feature class tool. This is just, to me, more logical. So I'm going to put it in the Big Cottonwood Canyon. We're going to call it the core point. Um, I don't want it to be a polygon. I want it to be a point feature. Um, I can leave all that, except for I do need a coordinate system. Let's have it match. That looks good. Okay. So it creates an empty uh, feature class for me, but I can start editing. And I just want to create a vertex. And then I want to zoom in to make sure that I'm getting the point inside a cell that has a red and it doesn't matter which one of these, it's just going to be upstream of this cell um, is going to be my new watershed. So I'm going to save that. Okay, now I've got my, my pour point and I can run the watershed delineation tool. So notice that it asks for the flow direction raster, not a DEM. So this is why it's really handy that you've named everything consistently. Your pore point, you've got that now. And we can use the ID field. Um, you'd need to be careful um, using this if you're delineating multiple watersheds at once from a file that has multiple pore points in it. And of course, I'm not going to just let that go wherever. I'm going to put it in my BCC outputs and we'll call it salt watershed. Now, what you get out here is, is a raster. And so you need to be aware that symbolizing this thing and using it is going to be limited to what you can do with rasters. So to test this, um, we might turn off everything but our hillshade. And then we could display this semi-transparently. And see if that makes sense. You can see that the watershed is following this ridge line here, the drainage divide, and that is logical. This is kind of a funky um, DEM to start with because it is clipped automatically at the country, county border here, and the border matches the watershed boundary itself. Um, but you'd be looking for the places to just verify that it looks correct. And it ends right at our pour, pour point, which is great. Um, so it looks like that was successful. So to use this watershed to clip other things, like you might want to clip your streams when you get that done, um, you're going to want to convert this to a polygon. I think that's the most logical way to do that. So 
raster to polygon. Okay, input the raster, watershed. Um, the value field is great. And then, um, of course, not accepting the defaults. We're gonna call it salt watershed. And it's gonna allow me to do that because, oh, hello. Did I just miss that up? No, I didn't mix that up. Um, simplify the polygons. That means it'll create diagonals instead of the stair-stepped raster output. That's usually a pretty good idea. Oh, that's great. I think it didn't like. I'll try that again. What is not liking that one bit? Well, that was interesting. I uh, got it to work by starting a new project and just adding it. I kept getting this error saying that um, the salt watershed raster doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not really sure what was going on there. Um, I try changing the names. Usually the 999 error means you've got a space in your path somewhere, but you can see here there aren't any spaces. Um, that's usually the number one reason, or starting some something along here with a number instead of a, a letter. Um, so something was hung up. I just started a new ARC project and added the watershed to it, and it ran just fine. There we go. So just broke the whatever was going on. But now I've got a watershed, a polygon version of the watershed. I can use that to clip. I can use it um, to adjust the symbology. I can you know, put no fill on the interior and just have a nice um, a boundary line for it. So um, yeah, that's usually a good way to go about it. There you go.